Hey, what is going on, guys? In this video today, we're gonna be going over the best and worst play styles for console Fortnite players. One of the things that I really like about Fortnite is that due to the variety of weapons and items in the game, you can honestly be successful with any type of play style if you're good enough as a player. And if you sort of want proof of that, look no further than the variety of play styles used by top level competitive Fortnite pros. If you watch a lot of comp, just think about how different someone like Clicks or Unknown Army plays compared to someone like Tfue or Chap. I mean, their play styles are basically polar opposites of each other, but it really doesn't matter because at the end of the day, all four players have had an insane amount of success at the highest level of play. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that all play styles are equal. Of course, they all have their positives and negatives, but I truly believe that some play styles are just easier to have success with, and that can change based on various different factors, including the current meta of the game, and especially the platform you play on, so that's why this video is for consoles specifically. So we're going to be breaking down a few different play styles and talking about how good or bad they are in general, and without further Further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so the first playstyle I want to talk about in this video is the support role. A support player, in my opinion, is someone who never really wants to be on the front lines in a fight. If it's a squads game, he's gonna let his 2-3 to three teammates rush into the fight and get up close and personal with the enemies, but the entire time he's gonna be sitting 10-20 to 20 plus meters away on the back line. And in competitive, this playstyle is very similar to what most people would call an IGL or in-game leader. Now in team game modes, I believe that the support role is incredibly undervalued and underrated for a few different reasons. First off, a good support player will be able to deal a significant amount of chip damage to all the enemies in the area. Those 25 to 30 damage AR shots add up very quickly, and it's going to help your teammates so much in the fight. Even though you may not get a ton of knocks, you're going to make the enemies weaker, probably make them box and heal up, and you're just going to annoy them so much because they're so preoccupied with their teammates that they can't focus on you. Another positive of the support role is that it gives you a great view of the overall fight, and you can use that to call out to your teammates and put them in the best possible position to succeed. This is kind of where the competitive in-game leader part comes into play, because you're going to be able to see things that your teammates can't since they're right in the middle of the battle. Maybe another team is rolling up to third party, maybe one of the enemies in the fight is trying some kind of flank play, maybe someone ran away giving your team the number advantage, those are all very valuable callouts that can totally swing a fight in your favor. And also, another positive of playing the support role is that you should almost always be one of the last players alive on your team. This may sound a little mean, but let's say your three teammates just get absolutely destroyed, you're far enough away from the fight where you can disengage, hopefully swing back a little later to pick up their reboot cards, and then live to fight another day. There are also some negatives of being a support player though, it isn't perfect by any means. The most obvious one in my opinion is the fact that the playstyle doesn't translate very well to solo game modes, and that's obviously because without teammates on the front line, you don't have anyone to capitalize on the chip damage that you get. You're gonna have to do that yourself. If you want a practical example of this at the pro player, look no further than chat. He's a pro that I would definitely consider as a support player slash IGL, and in team modes, he usually places very well. But when it comes to solo events and tournaments, at least recently, he's been having significantly less success overall. And the other major downside to playing the support role is something I hinted at earlier, you're probably not going to get a ton of eliminations. You're definitely going to contribute to a lot of them and rack up the assists, but if you're looking for consistent double digit kill games, this playstyle probably isn't the one for you. So with how chaotic team fights get in Fortnite, your team is putting themselves at a major disadvantage if you don't have at least one support player. 
The next play style is probably the most glamorous one in all of Fortnite, the Slayer or Fragger. I would describe the Slayer or Fragger of a team as the player who's most frequently the first one to enter a fight. Unlike the support player, they don't want to play slow and sit 10 to 20 meters away. They want to get right into the heart of the action where it's the easiest to rack up kills. And when it comes to pro controller players, I would say that most of them are the slayer slash fragger for their team. So I think the positives of this playstyle are pretty obvious as a whole. You're basically the alpha of your team, and that means you have the chance to pick up a ton of kills and just constantly be fighting enemies, which I think is the most fun way to play the game. Also, unlike the support role, this playstyle works pretty much equally as well in solos as it does in team mode. And I think that's a big reason why the last two PC solo FNCSs have both been won by controller players. However, despite the Slayer role being so popular, there are also a lot of negatives to it as well. First off, it's an incredibly high risk, high reward play style, so if you aren't very skilled when it comes to close range fighting, trying to play like a Slayer may be really frustrating. You're gonna need really good shotgun aim, fast editing, fast building, the list goes on and on. It's much easier to be a really good support player than a really good Slayer. The other negative is that as a Slayer, when you're in these team fights, you can be very vulnerable to things outside your control. Like I briefly mentioned in the support section, let's say you're going off in a team fight getting knocks left and right, but then a whole new full team comes in and third parties you before you can even heal up from the last fight you won. Since you're right in the middle of the action, you're always going to be the first player targeted, and that can result in some really frustrating and unavoidable death. The next playstyle I want to discuss is the Pencil Warrior. Pencil Warrior is sometimes used as a derogatory term to make fun of someone who overbuilds, but to me, it mainly just means a player who basically wants to turn every fight they're a part of into a build fight. The positives of this playstyle is that building is obviously a very powerful offensive and defensive skill, so if you can get really good at it and consistently outbuild your opponent, you're going to put yourself in a good position to win most of the fights you get into. Of course, you're still going to have to hit shots at the end of the day, but as long as you're decent at that, you should have a lot of success. Also, as I mentioned before, build battling is a skill that isn't super negatively affected by being on 60 FPS, so it's a very viable playstyle for console players specifically. The biggest negative of this playstyle is that you're obviously going to burn through mats pretty quickly, so it's a lot more viable in a mode like Arena with a faster farming rate and mats being dropped on death by enemies. If you were to try it in public matches, it probably won't go as well for you. And the final playstyle I want to cover in this video is the defensive player. This is a playstyle that you'll see a lot more in competitive, but I'm sure there are also defensive players in pubs as well. A defensive player is someone who only wants to engage in fights that they're incredibly confident they're going to win. And if they see a fight nearby that they feel anything less than super great about, they're going to disengage and just let somebody else handle it. Defensive players do a lot of third partying, they probably love to carry a sniper, and they should be really good at defensive building techniques like tunneling and boxing up. The biggest positive of this playstyle is that you're very likely to survive until the end of the match. In competitive, that's going to lead to a ton of placement points, and in pubs, I guess that'll lead to a lot more chances at getting wins. But the obvious negative is that you aren't going to get a super high amount of kills, and I believe that getting into fewer fights makes you improve slower as a player than someone who's a lot more aggressive. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you watched the entire thing, be sure to let me know with a comment down in the comment section below. Which playstyle of the ones I covered in this video do you think best describes you? Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do whatever the heck you want, and I will catch you guys next time.